conversation is about Lyme disease. Most doctors say it can be treated with a few weeks of antibiotics. But there are some patients with unexplained symptoms who claim traditional treatments haven't worked for them. It's led to a controversial diagnosis referred to as chronic Lyme disease. And Kelly Downing from Nashua, New Hampshire believes she in fact has it. I'm a wife and mother and I loved exercising. I loved extreme sports. I had a, a flu bug, an odd flu bug with my muscles and joint aches and pains and an odd rash. I had that for about a week and my right arm just all of a sudden paralyzed. I could not move it, nothing. Six hours later, my other arm started to paralyze. I continued to get progressively worse. I saw many different doctors and um, they just couldn't find what was wrong with me. And then it started affecting my hips and my legs. They started getting really weak. A friend of a friend said, I think that you have Lyme disease. I went to a Lyme literate doctor and come to find out um, I had a diagnosis of chronic Lyme disease. I started on oral antibiotics and I kind of just plateaued after about four weeks. The antibiotics were starting to take a toll on my body. My Lyme doc said I needed a break. On day six of being off the antibiotics, I woke up completely paralyzed from my neck down. To go from such an active, wonderful world to be completely paralyzed was surreal. And please welcome Kelly Downing. <laughs> Looking much better. How are you feeling today? Um, thanks to my Lyme literate doctor, thanks to the Kindred Healthcare therapist, and thanks to a community of prayers, I am doing so much better today. That's so great. Do you feel that you have been cured or do, are you still symptomatic? Um, um, no, I still am symptomatic um, in the thick of battling this illness, um, but each day I am doing it. And I know that as you were recovering, you had one goal in mind and you talked about that. Let's take a look. One of my goals was to be able to hug my children. We kept it a secret. I was in my wheelchair as normal with my arms down. And I looked at my children and I said, lean in guys, lean in. I have something to tell you. And as they leaned in, I just lifted my arm and I put it around them and I just squeezed. Oh. <laughs> How do you think? <laughs> um, what an ordeal. Has this been going on, Kelly? When did you first become symptomatic? It's been a uh, two-year journey um, to getting back to where I am now. Dr. Richard Horowitz is of the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Educational Foundation. He's also the author of Why Can't I Get Better? Solving the Mystery of Lyme and Chronic Disease. Dr. Horowitz, I was shocked to see the fury on both sides of this debate. What is chronic Lyme disease exactly? Well, from my perspective, chronic Lyme disease needs to be redefined because the patients who come to me, they don't just have Lyme disease. They have a multi-systemic illness, meaning they have joint pain, muscle pain that moves around their body and migrates, tingling, numbness, and burning that comes and goes, memory problems. But they don't just have Lyme. The patients who come to me have multiple tick-borne co-infections. They have parasites like Babesia. They have cat scratch disease, Ehrlichia, Anaplasma, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. You can get one tick bite and get multiple organisms into your body and it overwhelms the immune system. And the vast majority of my patients have had these multiple infections. If you come into a doctor's office with 16 nails in your foot complaining of foot pain, and the doctor pulls out two nails and he asks how you're doing, and you say I still have foot pain, that doesn't mean the treatment for Lyme was ineffective. It means you didn't find all the nails. And that's what my book outlines is the 16 different points of why people stay ill with this disease. Dr. John Halpern is still with us. And Dr. Halpern, I know that the majority of people in the medical community don't believe that chronic Lyme disease is a real condition. Why is that the case? The problem we have is that we base the diagnosis of Lyme disease on objective fact. And in most of these people, 
there is very little evidence to support that diagnosis using widely used and widely accepted testing. The other thing is that in terms of treatment response, when I was in medical school, we would do much like what you said, which is you treat the patient, you see they respond, and you say, aha. Nowadays, we use a much more scientific method of controlled studies. And when you do that and you see if people do better treated or not treated, there's no evidence that the treatment actually helps the situation. So we don't argue that this state doesn't exist. It definitely does, and it definitely needs a full history and physical, as Dr. Horowitz explained. I think you're absolutely right on that. But jumping to the conclusion that it's all these in infections is something that's unproven, unestablished, and the effect of antibiotics on it is simply not, a, not evident. What's your reaction to that, Dr. Horowitz? These tests are not reliable. They're not as reliable as what Dr. Halpern is saying. The medical literature has shown it's about 50-50. You'll pick up an ELISA about 50% of the time. And there's 100 strains of Lyme disease in the United States. The major commercial labs check for one strain, and there's 100 strains. If, in fact, there are a number of infections that can emanate from a tick bite, are they testing for all these different kinds of infections that could exist? And the answer is yes. Um, many, many infectious disease physicians, when they see a patient like this, will test for all those things. And the tests are uh, reliable. Jennifer Weiss was treated by Dr. Horowitz. And Jennifer, why don't you tell your story? I had two cases of Lyme disease. My first case, I finally made my way to a rheumatologist who basically started treating me, and I got worse on treatment until I was almost suicidal. I had six weeks of treatment. And after that, he said, if you had Lyme disease, you've been treated, and I washed my hands of you, and my test had come back negative. And I had to find another doctor, and it took me two years to get well, but I did. Nine years went by, and I was 100% perfect. And out of the blue, I got a groin pain that didn't go away for a year. And I went back to my old Lyme doctor, and he started treatment again. And that began an odyssey of five years. And finally, I made my way to Dr. Horowitz, and I began his treatment. And I'm pleased to say today, I don't even have a tingle, and it's been three and a half years. Why were you convinced? Why were you convinced, Dr. Horowitz, that this, in fact, Jennifer's problems were caused by Lyme disease? What I found in Jennifer specifically was Babesia. And when her Babesia got treated, her other symptoms, which were the neuropathy from the Lyme, started to get better. Dr. Halpern, what do you think needs to be done? I think that we have to look at it with a completely open mind and look at all the possible explanations for this. I think we have to recognize when we treat someone with seven months of antibiotics, what that does to the person's what's called microbiome, the uh, bacteria that live with us and are important to our uh, well-being. We have to think of what it does to envi our environment. There's a lot of talk out there about the effect of antibiotics on everything around us and how it subjects us to these superbugs. If you look at that in a scientifically rigorous fashion, it's very hard to justify this prolonged treatment. And, you know, with all due respect to Dr. Horowitz and his hypothesis, which is a very interesting hypothesis, there's no evidence to support it. What do you think needs to be done? Well, first of all, there is evidence to support it because in the back of my book, I have hundreds and hundreds of scientific references and addendums for doctors on how to treat these patients using my protocols, which have been effective. I have not had bad long-term outcomes. On the contrary, my patients do extremely well when they fail 10 to 20 doctors. So we need to get this model to the NIH, to the government. We need to do double-blind studies. I'm happy to do a study and work with anyone who wants to do it because I've proven that my model works. Thank you all so much for coming in today. I really appreciate you being a part of this important conversation. Thank you. The question is, what do you all think after watching this? We really want to continue the big conversation online. Dr. Halperin and Dr. Horowitz will be joining the discussion, and you can as well by going to our website at katiecurric.com. There you can also find Dr. Mather's Tick Smart Tips for Staying Safe. We'll be back right after this.